I appreciate that, that warm welcome because it is the end of the day and here you are. And I'm so glad that you've stayed. As Kate said, positive intelligence and mental fitness have been deemed 21st century leadership skills. So not only leadership skills, and if you're leading a team or a business, it's also an and conversation. They become essential life skills. Life skills. So I'm very excited to bring this to you. With me today, uh, let's see a little bit more about us here. So Vanessa is here, Vanessa Damro. And Vanessa is on our staff. She also happens to be my niece. Many, like many of you here, we are running a family-owned business. And we have the pleasure of working with large corporate partners, Fortune 50, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, and then small business. Small business is our backbone, as well as large organizations. And what we're doing is we are helping people be the best possible version of themselves. In the workspace, that means we're helping leaders become more self-aware and more effective leaders. And then we're helping teams build cohesion and communication. So we're honored to be here with you today. We appreciate your time and attention. A futurist recently stated at the UWM Women's Conference that attention is the new currency. So we appreciate the multi-million dollars that are in this room right now with your attention. We're going to have some fun today as well. Um, one last thing I should say about myself is that I come to you with over 30 years of experience. I know I started very young. I look young for my age. Um, I am a, what I would say, positive intelligence expert. And I've been working with business education, former school principal, and large manufacturing companies, and most recently in the financial industry, to bring the space of accelerating people and performance. So that's what I've been baptized as. If you look up my LinkedIn, you'll see Pe People and Performance Accelerator. One of my millennials decided, you need a tagline, and I'm like, that one sounds right. Uh, so Vanessa is also certified in positive intelligence and is a jack of all trades and head of operations and project management with us. So thank you, Vanessa, for being here today. Quick little ground rule. It's the end of the day. This is, a, I'm about to give you a, a, a tiny lecturette on positive intelligence. We call it the TikTok version of PQ. PQ stands for positive intelligence quotient, right? So it's like, the high level view of what it is. I do not want you to think you gotta memorize anything. Please don't even try. There's a lot here. This is a rich body of literature. I want you to have some fun. So that's my invitation to you. Let's have a conversation. Please make the space your own. I walk around a lot, so please don't be afraid if I like, start getting closer over here and say, hey, you know, you're gonna, you're, it's the teacher in me. I like to connect with everyone in the room. So how does that sound so far? We're up for some fun and just a conversation? Yeah? OK, great. <laughs> I wish you were like right up here. <laughs> it's always, uh, always fun to, to see who's in the room. All right, so why does it matter? Take a look at some of the stats on this slide of why mental fitness matters. One of, and, and by the way, these come from Lyra Health. and. One of the things that I want to share with you is that the Surgeon General has declared that we are in a state of emergency and, in fact, an epidemic where people are feeling isolated and alone. They're feeling stressed out. And in the workplace, people are feeling burned out. So as employers, that will catch our attention because we want to make sure we're creating workplaces where people feel like they can come to work and have some balance and be more productive. But what we know is that we're in a very demanding global market, and that's not happening. In fact, we're doing more with less resources, and people are starting to burn out. So the good news is that there are tools that can help you address this notion of stress, burnout, um, even anxiety that's being, being created. All right, so when I first read this quote, your mind is constantly sabotaging your potential for both performance and happiness. That was a tough one to hear. I'm like, so my mind is sabotaging me? Hmm. 
All our negative emotions, including stress, are the result of self-sabotage. Now, that's kind of a hard thing to hear, right? Well, the author of this book, Shirzad Shamin, has written Positive Intelligence. It is a New York Times bestseller, and the reason it is, it's flying off the shelf like hotcakes, and one of you lucky people today is going to win one, a, a copy of this book. Vanessa is going to hand out some index cards here in a minute, and if you're interested in entering a little raffle to, to win this, just put your name on there and you can send it back. You don't need to do phone number and email and all that stuff, it just really is a little giveaway toward the end here. But he has come up, I should say and, Shirzad has come up with this, this methodology, it's called mental fitness. It is a practice that takes you to a whole new level of awareness, performance, and impact. So check this one out. Your mind is either your best friend, and it can also be your worst enemy. Now there's a dot, and I see heads nodding like, whoa, that's resonating. And you're smiling too, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So Dr. Fred Luskin from Stanford University, uh, he's a psychologist and a lecturer, and he tells us that there are anywhere between 60 and 80,000 subconscious thoughts that are running through our mind on a daily basis. And so they're subconscious. That means that we're not even aware of the things that are funneling through our mind. Most of them are negative. So his invitation is, why don't we get real clear and careful about what we're thinking about through the course of our day so that we can be more impactful and happier? And happier is the value proposition. People don't care about a lot of stuff. They care about happy. I want to be happy and fulfilled. So let's start off with a working definition. What does it mean? What does mental fitness mean? And you'll hear me use this term interchangeably. So positive intelligence is this big body of literature and research. Mental fitness is the practice. So think about physical fitness. If you were going to get physically fit, you might go to the gym, get on the treadmill, start lifting weights to get strong muscles. Mental fitness is much like physical fitness, except it is strengthening our neural pathways, building new neural pathways in our brain. Sounds kind of fancy and interesting. I'm gonna tell you more about it. But what, what is it? It is our capacity. To be mentally fit means that when life throws us a curveball, it's our capacity about how we manage those difficult moments. Can we stay inside of a positive mindset or are we getting hijacked and stressed out and then you know, falling into a negative headspace? The impact of having good mental fitness is that you will improve your performance, you'll improve relationships and well-being. And when we talk about well-being, we're talking about confidence. People will say, how do I increase my confidence? My, you know, there was things at work that impacted my confidence and I can't seem to get it back. Or at home, how do I decrease the stress? How do I decrease anxiety? And mental fitness, this practice has been shown to impact these spaces and help you be the best version of yourself. All right, what do you think about this question up on the slide? Is pain good for you? What do you think, yes or no? Ah, it depends, that's a good answer. Tell me, what does it depend upon? Is it a short-term pain that's gonna get you a long-term value? Or is it you know, something that's going to be there for an extended period of time and not really gonna get you what you need? Okay, so is it a short-term pain? or a long-term pain, one that's gonna give some value or no value. It turns out that pain is only good for us for about a second, so yes, short-term value. The hand on the hot stove, whoa, I, you know, that's a quick indicator, I better get my hand off the stove. And any time longer than that, than that first moment of indication, right? The first moment that you touch that stove, any time longer than that is an indication that we're dwelling inside of a negative mindset. So you wouldn't leave your hand frying on the hot stove. Unfortunately, what a lot of us do when we have setbacks in life is we stay inside of that negative emotion. 
And you can see here, negative emotion will impede curiosity. It will impede laser-focused action, creativity, and a lot of the good thinking that our brain is capable of doing. It's my job to show you that positive intelligence isn't just woo-woo. If you look here, these four sciences feed up to create the foundation for positive intelligence. It is positive psych, neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and performance science. So here's what it's all about. It turns out that we have 10 saboteurs, some of them are listed here on the slide, and five sage powers. We all have these saboteurs going on in our head. Think of saboteurs as negative mind chatter. Think of saboteurs um, like the, the voice that you hear when you feel like you're not enough or that you're not worthy of something. Those are, those are the saboteurs. Scientifically, they are automated brain responses. When we're born, we get these automated responses in our brain that protect us from harm so that if there's danger, we know to not go there. Like, have you ever seen how children play and they approach <laughs> some, <laughs> most? There's something we're internally wired to be protected by our brain. Well, when we become adults, those saboteurs, they don't want to go away. They don't want to die. Well, we don't need them anymore in the same way that we did when we were children. So what they do, you know, think of them like little gremlins. Or think of them like if you can visualize a brain and you see neural pathways, like little, you know, little extensions, they are actually right there with us forever and ever. They never go away. Our job, though, is to try to minimize the power of those saboteurs, the power of those gremlins, to create new pathways to better thinking for ourselves. The sage powers is the good news. So there's five sage powers that we have access to right now, right here in this room. So if it's true that we have these 10 saboteurs, the thing that's also true and better news is that we have these five sage powers that are much stronger, even though there's less of them than the saboteurs. And they are here. The empathize power, explore power, innovate, navigate, and activate. Again, high level view. <clears throat> Here's something that's interesting. Saboteurs will generate some success, but never happiness. So as we start learning more about them today, you're going to notice that the saboteurs, like I said, they're there and they don't want to go away. They don't want to, uh, they don't want to die. Okay. So they promise you like, hey, work harder. We'll get more, you know, no pain, no gain, this kind of conversation. But in the end, it's sort of a miserable place to be. Whereas the sage teaches us like, hey, give yourself some grace, work hard, but also know when to balance things out. The sage tells us that we can generate our highest and most sustained happiness by operating from that space. Here's one more thing I'm gonna throw at you. The saboteurs, they live in the left hemisphere of our brain. These are, again, it's this neuroscience. The sage is in the right hemisphere of our brain. The left brain is analytical. The right brain is the feeling and sensing brain. So you can't analyze your way into the space of feeling and sensing. They're very different functions. So I have a video that's going to illustrate this point about how saboteurs work inside of us. When the speaker says above the line thinking, think sage, think all the things. It's like the best extension of yourself, the best version of yourself. When you see, when you hear the narrator say below the line, think saboteurs, the gremlins, the negative mind chatter. Okay. So here goes the video as uh, an illustration that'll bring this home very successfully. One question that conscious leaders ask themselves over and over is, where am I? To support leaders in locating themselves as they ask the question, where am I? We offer this tool, a line, a simple black line. At any moment, all leaders and all people are either above the line or below the line. 
Our location describes how we're being with what is occurring in our life right now. If we are above the line, we are open, curious, and committed to learning. If we are below the line, we are closed, defensive, and committed to being right. Stop right now and simply ask yourself, where am I? In this now moment, am I above the line or below the line? Typically, when people are below the line, they believe certain things about the world. For example, they believe there is not enough. It could be that there's not enough money, or time, or space, or energy, or love. People below the line also believe that their story about the situation is right. People below the line also believe that there is a threat out there. Something or someone is threatening their desire for approval, control, or security. And people below the line see the situation as serious. The deeper below the line they are, the more serious things look. People below the line tend to behave certain ways as well. They tend to cling to an opinion, find fault and blame, gossip, explain, rationalize and justify, get overwhelmed, and avoid conflict or pursue conflict for the sake of winning. When people are above the line, they believe that learning and growing are more important than being right. They believe that all people and circumstances are their allies, here for their growth. They believe that from a distance, almost everything is funny. People above the line live in curiosity, listen deeply, speak unarguably, question all their beliefs, and live a life of play. Now, knowing what you know about being above or below the line, where are you? One thing to know as you consider this question. We are hardwired to go below the line. Literally, our brain is programmed to perceive threat, and when it does, a chemical cocktail courses through our veins, and we go below the line. This reaction was designed to help us survive in the presence of a real threat to our physical survival. An issue for modern day leaders is that often our brains can't tell the difference between a threat to our physical survival and a threat to our ego or identity. We react and get defensive when we experience a threat to our ego. So in many ways, being below the line is natural and normal. But when we are below the line, we're not in a state, literally brain state, of high creativity, collaboration, innovation, and relational connection. We're simply trying to survive. Leaders today can't thrive if they're in survival mode. So the first activity of conscious leadership is location, location, location. In this now moment, where am I? Telling ourselves and others the truth about our current location begins the great conversation. Okay. So when we're working with, with um, individuals and, and the, just people and leaders, and they want to uh, kind of check in with themselves, you say, like, where am I right now? So if you were to check in with yourself just right now, and you say, how am I feeling right now? It's sort of like the end of the day. Am I energized because I've seen so many amazing booths out there and services? Am I a little tired because I've been walking around? Uh, you know, am I, am I excited about some of the people I've met today? Like, where, where are you right now? Are you ready for happy hour? You know, there could be a lot of exciting things that you might be feeling. Happy hour always gets a big smile, you see that? You guys came to life on that one. Um, there's, there's a technique to help us uh, build our mental fitness, and it's here. It's a three-step technique. The first one is intercepting your saboteurs. And for those of you who joined us just now, the saboteurs are this mental negative mind chatter. They're sort of like these little gremlins that tell you you're not good enough, like that, you know, like things that keep you from being your best self that sabotage you. Those are saboteurs. The first way to intercept them is by being able to identify them. The second one is powering up your sage brain. And the third is choosing a sage response. So let's unpack this a little bit. Again, the TikTok version, right? Just high level. It's important to learn that we all have this judge. The master judge is the ringleader of this conversation that we have going on in our head. And the judge is, um, you know, it's important for us to know like how our judge shows up. For some of us, it judges other people. It judges circumstances or situations or sometimes all of the above. And if it weren't 
were bad enough, this judge does not act alone. So remember, master judge, everybody has this master judge. And then the master judge elicits the help of nine accomplice saboteurs. So at any given time, we can have any one of these nine conversations going on in our head. They are the restless, the controller, the avoider, hyper-rational, pleaser, hyper-vigilant, hyper-achiever, victim, and stickler. So on the handouts that we've prepared for you today, there is a abbreviated version of the definitions of these. They are just like they sound. So the restless, this is, this is that, that saboteur who has you constantly working. Your mind is like on 10 different things at one time. You're constantly on the go. The controller, controllers will bulldoze over other people trying to get things done and they don't even realize they're doing it. They have to take control. Look at the little icons, you know, the, the puppeteer controlling everything. Uh, the avoider, these are folks who avoid difficult conversations or difficult people. They would rather jump off a cliff than have to have a difficult conversation. They just don't want to do it. They're avoiders. The hyper-rational, these are the thinkers of the accomplice saboteur profiles. The hyper-rational, they're disconnected from their emotions. These are people who show up as robotic. The pleaser, these don't know how to say no to folks. And what happens is that they put themselves last and then they become resentful because they're not getting their needs met. The hyper-vigilant, think worry warts. They're constantly worried. And the lie that happens here with the hypervigilant is that I, I have this profile and I will worry about, oh my gosh, is Vanessa safe as she's driving home and commuting today? Uh, you know, are, are you know, like the kids okay? Is my husband okay? Like I'm worrying. And the thing is that inside of that thought is like somehow I've learned that this is not the case, but look at the old thinking, right? That if I cloak them and all of this worry somehow that's going to put them in this protective bubble but, and yet no that doesn't work all it does is make them more anxious right um, hyper achiever this one is always on the go these are achievers who achieve one milestone and they don't stop to take a breath and to smell the roses of that achievement in fact they have performance linked with love self-worth self-validation so this is the negative side of the house, okay? Um, the victim, this is the woe is me, woe is me. Everything that goes wrong and you know, nobody loves me, nobody likes me, things never go my way, that's victim. And the stickler, stickler has perfectionistic tendencies. This stickler happens to be in my number one saboteur. And what's important to note about these these negative saboteurs, this is all below the line behavior, okay? These happen to be the shadow side of our most powerful strengths. So what saboteurs do is they take our strengths and they use them and abuse them against us and we fall into this below the line behavior that shows up like this. Tracking? Because this is really important. People go, oh, I don't want to be the stickler. I'd rather be something else. And these are all equal employer. What, what do we call them? Equal destroyers, equal, equally bad. There's no one that's better than the other. And at any given time, we can have any one of these nine paradigms playing in our head. Usually, one pops up stronger for us, though. Is that, you know, without even having taken the saboteur assessment yet, maybe there's one that's already resonating with you. And usually, you know, this is what happens, by the way. People don't go, oh, yeah, that one sounds like me. You know what they do? Oh, that sounds just like my kid. Or that sounds just like my husband, my sister, my brother. Well, which one is sounding like you, right? When you are below the line, when you're stressed, when you're tired, when you like hit this max, and you fall into that lower, be below the line behavior, which one sounds like you? And you know, just think about it, N not to answer out loud here. This is just for you. So positive intelligence has created a free assessment. So it is here and it's also, the links are also on the handouts that I provided for you today. It takes five minutes. 
And if you want, there's also a second assessment. Let me talk about the first one. This is called the saboteur assessment. And here's my, my profile. I'm happy to share it with you because like, <laughs> people go, I don't want to share my profile. This is fine. So I, I said to you that stickler is my number one. So if that's the dark side, what's the strong side? What's the strength? So sticklers have perfectionistic tendencies. That's the below the line behavior. That can get in the way of a lot of stuff. So I need to be aware that when that stickler is showing up, my team, here's the impact that it has on the people around me. They think that their work is not good enough. And wow, that was a big eye opener. Uh, let me bring it to you, uh, an example from home. So my husband made this beautiful lasagna and I, I love to cook. I'm an amazing cook if I do say so myself. <laughs> and he says to me, he says to me, hey, I made this lasagna. And then he goes, oh, I know it's not as good as yours. And like, you know, like the thing was, like, you know, you think he's being nice and saying it's not as good as yours. But really what was showing up there is, and it shows up quite a bit in my world. So I have to like be really clear about kind of being aware, right? People will say it's not good enough. And I don't want people in my life at home or in the workplace feeling like their stuff isn't good enough. I can't have that. That impacts performance. It impacts effectiveness, efficiency. Does that, does that track like how that, that can really impact, have a negative impact? Here's the positive side. So the strength of people who have the stickler profile is they're highly disciplined. They have a high standard for quality. So that's me, high quality, highly disciplined, high integrity, and we will get things done. We will drive and get it done, okay? So when I'm above the line, everything's great, and I'm bringing out the best in everyone, and I'm delivering. When I'm below the line, it's showing up like this, like perfectionism, okay? That's just one example. You can take that assessment five minutes, and it'll show you your top saboteur. All right. So then you can see my, my top three controller and hyperachiever. <laughs> I'm just a little bowl of cherries when I'm below the line, right? <laughs> this is really important, yeah, because it helps me see how I can show up in front of other people when I'm stressed. Yes, Kate? Just so you know, I'm a controller and I'm a hyperachiever. Okay, you have that profile too. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I think maybe, you know, uh, my brothers will tease me and they'll go, oh, here comes the leader, get out of her way, you know. All right, the other uh, assessment that's also available to you for free is called the PQ assessment. And it's this one, it's the positive intelligence quotient. And this one is really interesting. This one is going to tell you what percentage of the time you are in control of your mind and what percentage of the time your mind is controlling you. So. 75% or a score of 75 is the tipping point. So like if you took this assessment and you hit 75, it's like, okay, you're doing all right. And anything above that, you're in the thriving zone, meaning like you're very self-aware and you're in control of your thoughts. Do not feel bad if you come anywhere between zero and 74 because many people are right here in the surviving zone and even lower in a zone that is called burdened. We're just so weighted down and strapped down with, you can fill in the blanks with whatever's on your plate, but it's bringing you to a level where you are, you are just operating below the line some of the time. This is just an awareness builder so that you can stop and choose something different for yourself. This is five minutes and it's free and it's also on that website. All right, so here, this is just for you. Kind of take a look and kind of think about which one is resonating for you. There's a handout, maybe you can put a little star by the one that you think it is and then take the assessment and see how close you came to knowing yours. Let me just a show of hands, how many of you think you know your own accomplice saboteur? Okay, all right, all right, more than half of you. Oh, almost all of you. All right, very good. Yeah, they kind of announce themselves, don't they? I love this slide. This slide is a, a bit of a lifesaver. Oh, before I go there, is anyone interested in sharing their saboteur and why? Any brave souls out there? 
Vanessa, by the way, there's some cards there. Um, could you distribute those cards and people can write their names on them and then we have some giveaways. I have the books for you and um, some other little goodies here from the world of positive intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you too? Did that turn on? Yeah, it did. And okay. of course I argued with her and I was like, one, I don't know what that is, and two, no, I'm not. And the example that she used was that when she would get other people's work papers, they would have like coffee spilled on it or chocolate, and I'm like, well, that's just unacceptable. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me being a perfectionist, but yeah, the standard wasn't as high as what I thought it was, and she was noticing I would like make sure there were no marks on things or like do things over so yeah good that's a great example thank you let's give her a round of applause on that one it takes a it takes a lot of courage to to share these yeah back here now i feel like a 1990s talk show host <laughs> thank you yeah i'm pretty sure i would resonate most with the restless okay. because i especially in my social life I'm always trying to find the next thing to do and like mm -hmm. next activity with my friends or just sporting event or because I play volleyball and everything so I'm just trying to do all that and I never take time to just be alone with myself mm -hmm. and so that's just really eye-opening. All right, thank you. All right, round of applause back there too. You want to check? All right. I'm PhD level avoider. Oh, all right. I'll find other ways to be productive and avoid things I don't want to do. But mm -hmm. I rationalize that as, hey, I'm doing so many other good things. I can still avoid what I don't want to do. Beautiful. Couldn't have said it better. Round of applause right there for Matthew. Was it? Thank you so much. All right. Very good, guys. Take a look at this. This reminds me of the... For, for those of you who are old enough in the room, do you remember this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs? Okay, well, the, this is your brain and this is your brain on either the good endorphins that we produce when we're in right thinking or the bad um, chemical cocktail that soars through our body called saboteurs when we hit that below the line behavior. Let me tell you what I mean by this. This is exactly how our mind works, how our, our, our brain is working when we have an event that triggers us, a triggering event, this can be a person, this can be an incident, an event. Think about being cut off in traffic. I just got cut off in traffic today. This guy was going almost 100 miles as I was coming to get here, and he cut right in front of me, and then he cut in front of the guy in the center lane. Normally, that would just freak me out, and I have been practicing just staying calm, like, you know, I'm gonna affirm that there's just really good drivers out here too, and that guy is an outlier, right? Well, what happens is that when a triggering event hits us, we react emotionally first. We're hardwired to react emotionally. This is a safety mechanism of our brain. It's like, fire, run, okay? That's that fight or flight thing that happens. What happens is that if we don't stop to do some self-talk here when we're getting triggered, somebody throw a trigger at me. I'm giving you the example of getting cut off in traffic, but how can it show up for you? Any trigger, what gets on your nerves where you just want to lose your cookies and, you know, yes, Vanessa? A disobedient child. A disobedient child. All right, thank you. That's a good one. Who else? Ah, oh, okay. Do you have a minute to talk and it really is like 30 minutes, right? Is that it? Okay. Oh, who else? I thought that was you, but you were just doing the hair thing. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Someone's not pulling their weight. So think of all these things that aggravate you. How about the eye roll? You give somebody a directive and they're just like, uh, like that, right? Like that used to happen to me when I was a principal and I was just like, oh, somebody help me. I just want to jump over the desk here. But whatever it is, whatever it is that triggers you, it is so natural to like immediately go here and act without thinking about it. And then we create potentially a negative result. We can say things that we don't mean to the people in our lives. Or we have this moment where we pause 
and we talk to ourselves for a minute, like, okay, calm down, take a breath, you know, don't say anything you don't want to say, whatever it is that that self-talk sounds like, and then you can either create a better result, like a positive outcome, or unfortunately, we might fall here again into the negative side. So with the driver, I was like, oh my gosh, I just felt so unsafe, I'm freaking out here. And then I'm like, okay, it's okay, it's okay, I'm safe, all is well. <laughs> and then I'm like, darn it, he's a jerk. <laughs> I still go here, right? Instead of like, okay, everything's cool. So, you know, this is a human moment, but this is it. This is how our brain is operating 24 seven. What do you think? Kate. Yeah, so you go negative, uh, you go emotional. You go emotional first, right? You, and that's like a good thing because <laughs> think of active shooter, think of like a situation that, like we're not even thinking, we're survival mode. However, we can also pause, and, and this is looking at a triggering event that is making you lose your patience, it's trying you. And you can go here then, you recognize it as such, and you say, how do I wanna be in this moment? So the driver cut me off, I immediately like, uh, get upset, and then I say, how do I want to be in this moment? It's the $20,000 question, by the way. The US Army created that campaign, they hired these two psychologists to come up, remember that Be All You Can Be commercial from the whatever, 80s? It was all about when they train the soldiers, they train like this mental fitness, this mental capacity to stop in your tracks and ask yourself that question, who do I wanna be right now? And then you're at a choice point. This is it, this is the choice point. Because you just talk to yourself and you choose something that empowers you and supports you, or you go here and you just, and it's okay if you go here. I mean, like this, if you have something really weighty, a weighty problem, Think of little dumbbells. You can pump little one pound dumbbells all day, right? But if you get something really weighty, 25ers, you're gonna be like, whoa, or you know, maybe more. <laughs> you look like you could do 25 in your sleep right there. <laughs> you just look strong. But like, think of a big weight. The weightier the problem, the harder this becomes, the more difficult it is to do this. And that's why we practice getting stronger with our mental fitness. Does that make sense? All right. Questions or thoughts about this? Yes, sir, let me bring you the mic so I can all hear you. Testing, did I turn it on? That one. How about now? Yeah. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, I, something I always thought of it as responding versus reacting, mm -hmm. where a response is gonna be something that's gonna be controlled, where a reaction is gonna be something that's gonna be automatic. Yes, yes, so here, is reaction and then response is right there. Yeah, thank you for that clarity, that clarification. Great value add. All right, let's go on because we got some good stuff for you here. All right, so here comes the next part. Once you understand that piece of like how our brain is working and you want to make the shift, you say, but how? And is it that easy to shift from that below the line thinking to the above the line thinking? And Vanessa, if you can pick up the card, so we'll, we'll do the raffle for folks. Here's how you get above the line. You power up your sage. So remember, you, again, you're moving into that right hemisphere of the brain. Your sage is associated with all of these positive emotions, clear-headed, laser-focused action, you know, big picture thinking and creativity. This is the best part of you. This is the you, this is where, where, you know, the shadow side of all those saboteurs, this is the strengths. You are operating on all cylinders, you are above that line, being your best self inside of positive emotions and generating happiness. So how do you do it? This is the, the technique right here, it's called a PQ rep. And rather than tell you about it, I would like to invite you to experience it. The PQ reps, they activate the right hemisphere of your brain, and it goes like this. It's, it's this easy. We're gonna do 10 seconds. So if you would, 
find your fingertips, your, four, your thumb and your index finger, and just gently rub the fingertips together with such a tension that you can actually feel the ridges of your fingertips against each other. See if you can command your mind to actually go there and just feel those sensations of touch. And that is it. 10 seconds of a PQ rep. So when you are um, stressed out, you can activate the right region of your brain with sensations, with breathing. There's any number of, uh, of these techniques that are available to you through the senses. So here we're doing tactile, you can do visual, you can do auditory, um, you know, again, using all of your five senses to activate your, your um, right hemisphere of your brain. Uh, I have a handout, and I believe it looks like this right here. Oh, wait, let me, let me take a step back. Apart from activating your senses, there's one other technique, okay? And remember that there's like a whole bunch of these PQ opportunities, but there's one more important thing and it's called the sage response. So people who are mentally fit and very strong at being mentally fit are really good at this. They find gifts and opportunities inside of the setbacks. So when life throws you a curveball, you have the capacity to say, all right, Where's the gift or opportunity inside of this moment? Now in the book, Shirzad talks about Christopher Reeves. Remember that horseback riding accident that he had and he became a quadriplegic. He goes on record as saying that it was one of the best things that ever happened in his life because he found the gift of family and connection. He had lost that. The book references um, the founder of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. This mother loses her 13-year-old daughter to a drunk driver and decides that she is going to open and, and begin this campaign, the, the MAD campaign, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, so that her daughter's life will be memorialized by creating awareness about healthy driving and don't drink when you drive. So those are examples of people who took like really heavy big things and used the sage perspective. There's a quote by Nelson Mandela, I never fail, I either win or I learn. The first black president of South Africa. And again, just underlying this, this um, notion of life throws us curveballs, life is not fair. What do we do when we experience setbacks? And this is one way of building your mental fitness by finding that silver lining, finding the opportunity in whatever is happening. This is master level stuff, and it's in the book as well. What do you think about this one? Yeah, lots of heads nodding, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. All right, we'll keep going. Okay, so here are some examples of PQ reps on your handout. So there's a little, little definition there so you can read this when you get home and you can see some of the examples on there. We're told that uh, the science tells us that 15 minutes a day for six to eight weeks will actually create new neural pathways in your brain. So if you were to take an MRI before and after, you would actually see changes in the gray matter of your brain with 15 minutes of daily practice. It is as easy as 15 minutes of just mindful breathing, go out for a walk. Like if you can do that for yourself, 15 minutes a day, that's the secret formula. So if you take nothing from today, <laughs> take this, take one thing, you can just breathe. Just take a breath when you're feeling stressed out and find that thing that works for you. Maybe it's a walk, maybe it's loud music and you know, you're rocking away and you find your happy place. Maybe it's a pet. People enjoy, like you sit down and you have your cat or your dog, whatever brings you joy, connecting with your child. There's all kinds of examples on that handout. All right, so I would like you to just turn to the person who's closest to you, if you would. This is the part where you get to interact a little bit. Um, journaling is also another way of building your mental fitness. If you were to write every day before going to bed 
three things that you were really grateful for, and it could be random across a period of time, you would find that you will become more grateful and you find more happiness as you're sort of creating these long lists of stuff that's going right in life or stuff that you're enjoying. So we have some journals to give away today. And what I'd like to do is if you would just turn to whoever's closest to you, maybe it's two people, maybe it's three, just find yourself just for a couple minutes, just share, what are you grateful for today? Ready? Just a couple minutes. Go. <laughs> All right, King, let's come on back. You guys look amazing. This is uh, the end of the day here, and you all are holding strong. That's very sage of you, very, very high, high sage. So let's do this. We have, we have some raffles for you, and I'm going to just grab here little, a little reward here for your awesome participation. Okay, how about this one? Okay, so Mike. Cottrell, is it Cottrell? Where are you? Yeah. Mike. All right. Oh, Mike. All right. So, Mike, you won the book. So, Vanessa, you're going to be Vanna White. You're going to be like running. Some of you might have to come up this way. All right. Let's see what else I have for you. Journals. All right. Beth Pamahi. Beth, come on up, Beth. You get a journal. All right. Let's give them some rounds of applause. Allison. Allison, where are you? Yes. All awesome. You get this one. There you go. This one's you. Oh, thank Beth. you. Here you go, Allison. Here's one. Um, Matthew Jahas, is it? All right. Oh, come on up. Wonderful. And the crowd roars. Come on, crowd. You guys got to generate some energy here. <laughs> All right. And then, oop, I grabbed this one. Alec, um, it's heart something. Heart, heart, heart. Is that you, Alec? Okay, thank you. Here you go, Vanessa. So journal, 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 Stephanie Hobbins. Where's Stephanie? Oh, there you go, Stephanie, come on up. And then, weren't these just adorable? I just, look at this, stress balls. Squishing stress balls has been shown to decrease your high blood pressure. Look at this, is that the most adorable little thing? It's a seal, I'm having squish ball envy. Look at this, oh my god. All right, but okay, wait now, cause Look at this, all these self-care tips, and it's aromatic. These are from Life Camp, so here we go. April, where's April? All right, April, I'm throwing with my left. And that was bad. <laughs> yeah, Vanessa, you're a lefty and you're so good. All right, how about this one? Rosie Roberts. Ah, okay, Rosie. <laughs> how about if we roll? <laughs> there we go. Papa, <laughs> good one. And, and it was going to be playful here today, too. All right, I think I have two more. And then that does it for the stress balls. These are so cute. These are amazing. OK, where's Mark? Mark, uh, is it K-A-M-E-L-S? All right. Mark, here you go. All right, ready? I'll roll. <laughs> We're playing here in the last one. All right, I'm going to roll. Mix all these up. Drum roll, drum roll. Kathy, Kathy, O-C-H-O-C-K-I. Oh. Kathy, all right, Kathy, welcome. <laughs> all right, I feel ready. Hey, oh, almost, all right, all right, all right. All right, gang, so all of these fun little toys, and if you didn't get one here today, out that, those exhibitors have some amazing PQ-related things. You know, doing this, just squish away that stress, squish away the stress. I want to share with you that one of the groups was talking about Saboteur contagion, a fancy word. Can I share what you're saying, Kate? So Kate said, what happens, you know, like, she notices her controller, she has the controller saboteur, and Dan has the controller saboteur, so that when they're... Don't. Don't, don't tell them, huh? No, don't tell everybody. She gave me permission. <laughs> Stickler, Stickler and controller. Stickler and controller. You're my close cousin. My four cousins. All right. So um, what can happen is if you're in saboteur mode, and it doesn't matter which one you have, if you're in saboteur mode, you can trigger somebody else's saboteur. And then if both of you get into that saboteur space, nothing good is going to happen there. And yeah, you gave the example of your husband. I can do it with my husband too. Like those two sticklers come out and it's like, oh, we need to stop. Stop, drop, and roll into a PQ. PQ, your positive rep, positive 
uh, quotient rep, it's breathing, it's just pausing, it's saying, who do I want to be right now? And I don't want to be a crazy woman yelling at you, because that's not going to get us anywhere. I want to just be calm. Yeah. So who do you want to be in that moment when you get triggered and when you just want, you feel like you're going to lose your emotions, control of managing your emotions? Who knows what that's called when we lose it? It's a kind of a fancy word. Think of airplanes and people taking control of the airplane. What are they called? Hijackers. We get hijacked by the saboteurs, by our negative emotions, and it happens. So when it does, just give yourself a break. Give yourself some grace. All right, so we are at that, that Q&A part of the time. And I just want to let you know that at Life Camp, we offer all of this stuff. We are Milwaukee's premier mental fitness company. So if this sounds of interest to you, look us up. Come see us. There's an eight-week virtual mental fitness program that you can do online. There's also a um, people call us, and they have team building and we help teams become stronger. There's four hour sessions, there's full days. And we always partner with Biz Times to bring special rates. And we have a flagship program of transformational leadership training programs where you disconnect, you unplug for four days, and you come and you do a boot camp at Life Camp. And these are, these are for folks who really want to, you know, you've got a question that's keeping you up at night and you want to explore it more, unpack it, and be the best version of yourself. So this, we have a guest event coming up on June 5th. You can come check it out. It's a little taste of what the training is like. And then here's some recommended reading. This is one to take a picture of as well. Um, these are amazing books on mental fitness that you can add to your reading list. They are all about how to navigate these challenging times. Like how do you keep control of yourself? How do you become more mentally fit? Every one of these authors, uh, Shirzad Shamin here with Peak Positive Intelligence. We have Ariana Huffington, Tom Rath from Gallup on well-being, and then Marshall Goldsmith with Mojo, and Dr. Seligman. He is the founding father of positive psychology, Dr. Martin Seligman, and he has the book called Flourish. What all of these books have in common is they are saying people. We are living in very hectic times. People are stressed out, burned out. Pause, hit the pause button and come back and do some self-care. Breathe, take care of you, because nobody else is gonna do it. So that wraps up our program and I will close by just inviting you on your sheet, on the back of one of your sheets, there's a little blank space. If you just do one thing of all the things that you heard today, like if something resonated with you, think about what, what would I do a little baby step forward to help me be mentally fit, meaning help me be stronger, more present, happier. Maybe it's taking a walk, maybe it's getting a massage, a facial. What is it for you? Having a nice glass of wine or a beer, happy hour. Everybody was like, yeah, happy hour. Whatever makes you happy. What's one step that you will do to get closer to your ideal future, meaning that happier version of yourself? And just write it down for yourself and then move that direction. Okay, that's the homework from the teacher over here, the principal. <laughs> but thank you so much for being an amazing audience today. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to hang out here. If you have any questions, please come back. I want to finish us up right on time at 4.30. But we're here, and you can find us on the internet as well. Thank you for being a great audience today.